Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jaylee, the Jaylee's Corner. This is my review for Braxton Family Value Season 7, Episode 2. Okay, I hope everybody had a great day. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel to become a whole Jaybird. Jaybird. Dun, 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 dun. And all that goodness and stuff, y'all. It's like 1.30 in the morning. I'm a little bit tired. I'm going to give it to y'all straight. Let's get on through this review. Um, do not forget to also to relax, to relate, to release, to inhale and to exhale, to center yourself and everyone around you and all of that goodness and stuff. Okay. I'll move on past that. So we see everybody's in town for the wedding and everything. You know, Trina's wedding. Yes, this may be the third man she's marrying, but damn it, it's still another wedding, okay? Now, Mama E, uh, Tamar, Umba, y'all know they call Tawanda Umba, and I like calling her Umba, so I say Umba. Uh, Trace and Trina, Tony was not there for a little lunch or whatever. Now, Tamar, like, I have nothing a mosquito bit me. Not a mosquito, but maybe a spider bit me. It sounds like my, it's just like a little bug bite. Anyway, um, Tamar say how she needs to know what's going on with the wedding because Logan is in the wedding and she has no idea what's going on, what's happening, and what need to be what. And both Trina and Umba say where there was an itinerary, the itinerary was sent out, you were on the email, you were on the list for the email that has the itinerary. I didn't get no itinerary, so come somebody forward it to me, please, okay? So we had that whole conversation. Mama E then said, how was the best of rap party? How did that go? And Tamar go on and say it was a horrible, unsaved dick party. This dick, 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 dick everywhere. You know, Trina needs a whole wholesome redo party. We, we can be respectable wives that worship Jesus or whatever. I'm like, Tamar, you're not a wife. So if there was a respectable white party, you wouldn't be invited. Because at this point in time on the show, you were still fucking your uh, boyfriend. And fornicating. So, girl, please. It just, what aggravates me with that whole respectable wife thing is, you not a respectable wife. So, don't try to downplay or speak negative about a party that everyone had a good time at when you are not what you are preaching that they should be. Okay? You are a girlfriend fornicating with David. Okay? Stop doing that, Tamar. Come on now. You may have found God again, but still, don't be out here you know saying, being judgmental. Don't do that. Okay? We love you, but don't do that. Anyway, so she say, you know, for the night she wants to host an uh, evangelist slumber party and because she is the most recently saved person, she will be the evangelist. Girl, stop playing with Jesus. Okay, stop playing. Look, Jesus could have said, stop playing with me, little girl. And now you and David then broke up. You done lost your shut, girl. Let me stop. Anyway, but just to stop, Tamar. But Trina then gets a call because her cake is this a whole cake issue or whatever. And, I mean, it's not a good cake at all. We have a picture of the cake. Here's the cake. So the cake just looks bad. Okay, the cake does not look good at all. Okay, she wanted a peacock and she said it looked like a duck. That do look like a duck. Okay, that's not that's not a peacock. A peacock that's that's like a a, a baby swan in the water. Okay, we don't see no feathers or nothing. Who made that's that's what they thought a peacock was? A peacock have colors. Well, girl, and is it a tin can? I'm thinking. I don't know. Girl, that must that was a two dollar cake. Okay, we're gonna leave that be. But it was a funny scene nonetheless. Tamar is being animated. You know, they all laughing or whatever. A good time was so had by who? By all. Okay. We then see they have the little slumber party or whatever. And Tony is there. You know, Tony asking about the bachelorette party too. And then Tamar walk in. And Tony said, why aren't you dressed like John the Baptist? Because Tamar really came in that dress as if she was an evangelist. I'm like, girl. But it was still funny. Okay. It was very, very funny okay she brings up high because i got a bless to wanda you know i have to bless the the, the dingling the dingling spirit out of umba you know after all the dicks that was at the at the party it was she said a whole little prayer she had a little holy it probably wasn't really holy water but she had like a little holy water it was classic Braxton's okay is what we love from season one and like season two it's like if the past other five seasons hadn't happened this is what we have been waiting for okay they were laughing 
making up a song, praying, and saying it was like old times. Them being themselves, just having a good time or whatever. They laugh about their daddy who wanted to sing at the wedding, you know what I'm saying? They do a whole little dance around, little thing, like, you know, your tea daddy how to dance and whatnot. It was so refreshing to see it, you know what I'm saying? It was, oh, you know, look at them. Having a good time, everyone smiling, clapping in their pajamas, and just enjoying each other's company, okay? They even said a whole prayer about Trina's uh, wedding Easter bunny cake, okay? And it was funny because Tamar said, God, please rejuvenate the bird cake in Jesus' name, okay? It was funny. And I feel like this is what they need to realize is the reasons that we love them. I love that Tamar. I love that, you know, Umba and Tracy and Trina and Tony. That's why the Braxton show became so popular. It became some bullshit when they started fussing all the goddamn on time. And it was really more bullshit from between Trina, uh, not Trina, Tracy and Tamar. Now, Tamar was the worst of it, but again, it was both for them. But again, I loved this from them. Amazing. Anyway, so we then, it's like a whole little rehearsal dinner. No, the wedding rehearsal, okay? And, you know, Trina's a bit aggravated, you know what I'm saying? Because at this point in time, her brother had not shown up because her brother's like her may mate man of honor or whatever i don't know logan who was a ring wearer wasn't there so she was a bit aggravated we see judge maybelline is going to be presiding over the wet and everything and i said like, but she didn't seem like she knew what she was doing either but again when you are doing a rehearsal it's like how do you want your wedding to be? Usually there's some direction. You know, she may know the words to marry them, but not necessarily the progress or the, or the, 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 you know, we get the progress of the events and whatnot. We don't need that be. Now, Vaughn, like, will you be in a better mood to have a better attitude tomorrow, uh, Trina? And she said, your baby daddy. Go. I said, do he got a baby daddy? How does Vaughn have a baby daddy? Vaughn got a baby daddy. I think she meant to say baby mama. But she said, baby daddy, I'm going to leave that being and whatnot. But they do the little rehearsal. Her daddy there. Her daddy was in the background there. I'm like, why is he dancing? Is he flossing? I feel like someone taught, you know, daddy Braxton a little flossing dance and whatnot. And he just keep doing it. And I'm because he was always in the background somewhere dancing. I'm like, girl, it was just funny. Now they then say, hey, Trina. They delivered your new cake. Now, that first cake that did not work out, she was like, no. So, she got a second cake made, okay? Because she wants this, you know, uh, peacock, okay? And this was the second cake, okay? Yeah, the head fell off. Yeah, the, the, uh, that, the head on the ground, the head fell off. I'm like, this is an instant game. This is really a what I wanted versus what I got situation. I mean, it is, girl. Now, the dude said this. it came in a box. And this is how it was in a box. Um, Whoever made this cake, they should really blast them. This is horrible. That's not a peacock. It looked like if a caterpillar, you know, spread it is it's still out. To become a butterfly, and now was the, the the leftover remnants of the caterpillar. That's what. And why is the thing decapitated, girl? Anyway, Vaughn was like, "That's garbage." Like, do we pay for that? And she said, "Yep." In full too. He was like, "Oh no, mm -mm, no, that's garbage." I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's garbage." So we then see Tony go to see Trina at her final dress fitting, and she looked amazing. Like this dress fits like a glove her body is sick okay titties sitting up right okay she looks amazing the detail beading on it looks amazing okay it was just a really good dress to oh my god I told you like oh it's so pretty i'm like and even though again it's her third wedding okay we're gonna leave that be but she's well maybe it's her fourth because she did marry gay twice point is she looked Gorgeous. Okay. Now she brings up to Tony, to Tony as they sit around uh, chitting, chatting that, you know, it's not a traditional wedding. You know, things are a little bit different. She brings up how the wedding and the reception will be in the exact same place, meaning, you know, they'll have tables where you sit at the wedding will also be your seat for the reception. You know what I'm saying? It's all in one room. And I'm going to show a picture of it later on to explain that a little bit more and my feelings on that and whatnot. She also brings up how Tamar 
seeing that she did not get an itinerary so logan wasn't ready to go to the rehearsal but she still feels as if i know i sent her the itinerary now tony then say that she didn't get one either but i feel like tony shouldn't because tony not in the wedding like as long as you know what time the wedding starts you shouldn't get the itinerary, okay? I mean, that's what I think, but I'm going to leave that being and whatnot. But Trina still say you were on the email list. Well, who sent the email? That's the question. I'm going to leave that be, too. Now, she brings up again how the cake was decapitated or whatever. And that was a real, real bad thing because she was so upset because, again, she wanted this cake. And Tony said, what did you want in the cake? If you wanted a, a peacock, you know, why don't you have a, a, a pale peacock? A peacock has color. It's like, did you want an albino peacock? I said, bitch, the albino peacock. It was fun. Again, classic Braxton stuff that we love. But she tells her, look. Don't worry about the cake. Me and Tamar will get a cake. We'll fix it or whatever. Don't fret. Don't trust. We got it or whatnot. So we do see Tony and Tamar go to see the pastry chef or man or whatnot to try to get a new cake. Because, again, the wedding is when? The following day. Like it's in less than 24 hours or whatever. And she needs, because the cake that came... The second cake that she got was still bad. I guess this girl, it was messed up. Anyway, so they let, the, you know, the chef do a thing or whatnot. And Tamara keeps saying, my sister wanted a ghetto cake. She got a ghetto cake. And now she needs a real cake. Well, stop saying that, Tamar. And so the cake men go in the back to look at these books and whatnot to figure out what kind of cake he can make them, you know, on short notice or whatever. As they're chitting and chatting, you know, Tamar brings up how, you know, the reason everything is so messed up, the cake thing is messed up or whatever, is because people aren't being honest. People are not telling Trina the truth, okay? You know, the, the wedding is not organized. The cakes was messed up or whatever. These things are happening. Oh, excuse me, I'm not cutting that out. It's happening because no one is being truthful with Trina. I feel like with weddings, someone has to be held accountable for certain things. When you don't have an actual part, even if it's not a a, 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 a wedding planner, you still need someone who's, who, who's doing the, the seating. Who's going to make sure the seating is done? That's your job. Okay, you, that's you. That's all you. Okay, who is making sure of this or that? If you don't have that, then your wedding will be a shit show. Especially when it's like, you know, hold to do things and whatnot. But, Tony, like, look, we all get along right now. We have not seen each other and been together since nap or whatever. Everything's running real smooth. We all get along. Tomorrow will be great. She's like, see, it's going to be some bullshit because whenever somebody say, that we get along and something will be great. Bullshit and too. Like, I'm going to be quiet. I ain't saying anything. It will not be nobody for Tamar. I'm going to leave it be or whatever. She then say, like, to be honest, they wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for me. I'm just like, what What does she mean? Like, I'm confused. She then say, Vine only proposed to Trina because it was Tamar's birthday. And I'm like, that man bought a ring, took her to meet his mama, met up with your daddy, he had planned to propose, period. That was just the one time y'all was all together in one place. Tamar is real, girl. Anyway, and Tam Tony brings up how Tamar loves to make everything about her. She do. Because him proposing ain't had shit to do with you. And if he would not have proposed that day, he would have, don't make it seem as if she would not have gotten engaged if you wasn't born. Okay, let that go. Let that hurt go, Tamar. Let it go. Okay, anyway, the beggar do come back because I can make this cake and that cake. What cake do y'all want? And they pick a little cake or whatever. And they need it tomorrow. Now, he like, you know, usually for this cake that you picked, it takes us a month to get it planned out. And you need it by tomorrow. Okay, that's going to cost $2,800. I was like, for a cake, for a cake, I only, I mean, I like pound cake. I like a chocolate cupcake. I like chocolate walnut brownies. I'm not paying twenty eight, but I guess it's twenty because they have to make enough to feed uh, like a uh, two hundred people or whatnot. But again, they get it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Now Tamar called the man the wrong name because his chef coat had like Scott on it. He said my name was Brian or whatever his name was. I would the coat say that. You know, it's okay. You know, sometimes my name is different too, depending on what wig I have on. Again, funny scenes. 
funny Tamar. Tamar was on this season. Tamar was invested in this season. Tamar was a willing participant this season. So I can't wait to see what happened that made her no longer want to be involved in the season and whatnot. But again, funny, 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 funny. Now we do see they have the whole rehearsal dinner and whatnot. Everybody there, you know, mama, daddy, all the kids, all the spouses. But we do see that David was not there. Tamar David and they were together that time and then we see Birdman wasn't there and it's because is he really dating Tony I don't think he is really dating Tony and Miss Wanda was not there and they said because they know mommy has to be around Miss Wanda tomorrow so they had you know she did not come to this particular um dinner or whatnot so we then see it's wedding day wedding day wedding day now we don't see the wedding this particular episode we do see parts of it though so you know trina getting dressed looking all cute she's like twanda umba don't you come up in here and no god dang on slutty ass tight ass the, mm, don't you be up here being all nasty twanda looks fine i'll have put this on that the, um the next episode because it was if i couldn't get any good shots of their clothes i still feel like um uh, besides trina Tracy was the best dress. Tracy's jumpsuit was amazing. I was really mad that I could not get a good still photo of it. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? They all walk like mom. You look cute too. But again, they all getting dressed. Okay, and things are a bit out of order. They don't know who to, who know the seating chart. Where's this? Where's that? Where's so so again? Nobody who was in charge of one particular thing is being in charge of that one particular thing. Everybody doing a little bit of something. Now, um, we really seeing, you know, how they're trying to get the seating chart together because they do not want Mama Braxton seated at the same table as Daddy Braxton with his wife, Miss Wine. Okay, so that's the whole thing. So, um, but like, let me find out who is doing seating to make sure that, like, this is Mommy's table, that's Daddy and Miss Wine's table because, you know, Mommy don't want to sit with them and I you know it, it's fine anyway so she's like okay so Miss Wanda's table is here mommy's table is here okay make sure y'all know and they are aware whose table is who so so Wanda then go sit down go sit Miss Wanda at the table that her and daddy Bracken is at cool 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 but when she does that we then see Tracy come and sit down with her husband, her son, talking to Miss Wanda at this picture table. So when they do that, mommy then wants to go be seated. So someone whose face we can't see is walking mommy to the table. She then said, Oh, this table is fine. And she sit down. She sit down because it's where Tracy is sitting with her husband and son. And I feel like she thought this must be our table because, again, my daughter is here. But I'm like, did you not see Miss Wanda sit there? But I'm going to leave that be, too. Now, when she sits down or whatever, Tracy, on her breath, says to Miss Wanda, did they do this shit on purpose? And I'm like, no. Mommy did that on her own, okay? Points blank, period. Because she then said, oh, this table is fine. And then sat down and was talking to Kevin Jr. So, we have these two at the table. So you see mommy sitting there, Miss Wanda over there, you see Tracy right there, and then uh uh Kevin look Kevin Jr. whatever. So I'm like mommy thought, oh, this must be our table. Cool, cool, cool. But as she look around and she like, Am I supposed to be sitting here? To Wanda then see mommy not supposed to be there. And she's like, you know what? No, go get mommy. Take her to the right table. She's a table, whatever, whatever, whatever. So they go get mommy and put her at the right table where she's supposed to be. Mommy then says, oh, I knew she looked familiar, you know, to my Miss Wanda. She's like, but, you know, I'm happy they sat me at that table. I am so happy they sat me there because she didn't seem happy. You know, she looks so sad. You know, something is wrong with her. But I didn't ask no question because it ain't my business. And I'm happy they sat me there because I realized I had the victory over all that happened. Look at God. And I was like, look at Miss Wanda. This is Miss Wanda sitting at that table. Mind her own married ass business. Okay, look, this is my thing. I know Daddy Braxton cheated on mommy 25 years ago. I believe with Miss Wanda, and I he been with Miss Wanda ever since. 
No one is saying, you know, Mama Braxton don't have the read. No one can say when anybody gets over something. What I know is, as a woman, I don't want to sit and be hurt over some man for 20 years. Okay, I don't want to sit and be lonely and by myself and miserable. Okay, because I want to harp on the fact that my ex-husband cheated on me, left me for Miss Wanda, and been with her ever since. Okay, I would not want to sit and harp on on that I would want to have moved on and got better than my ex-husband but no mommy is in her damn 60s or 70s probably her 70s and she's miserable she's miserable and she's messy because to sit there and say I'm happy that I sat there because I feel like she's unhappy and she's sad who sits there and say I got the victory over this 20 years later, if you don't feel like your cheating ass husband not being in your life was you having the victory then because he wasn't shit then and you would be free to live your free ass life, mommy, grow up. Grow up. She didn't look unhappy. She didn't look sad. She probably felt awkward because for the person who she know don't like her is sitting right fucking there. <sighs> Look at God. I got the. And this is why all them daughters is fucked up. Because they mama been miserable for 22 damn years. Anyway, besides that, okay, this point in time, the wedding is going to get underway. And this is the little venue. Okay, so you see the tables that people are sitting at. You know, the open space. Okay, the, the little arch bank up there. The, the groomsmen up there, whatever. To me, this being a, you know, non-traditional wedding to where, you know, you have people in their seats. I would love to do this. Maybe not in this hall. You know, may I, I would want them ceilings covered up a little bit. Okay, I would want a better archway, but I'm going to leave that be. But I feel like so many people have weddings where you have to go to one place for the wedding and sit there. You have to then leave and drive somewhere else and go and sit and wait over there too for the people to get back. It should be teen too much. If you had everything in one place and you have it to where people can be sit seating to where they can all see just about everything. It makes more sense. Okay. It makes more sense. I like Trina and Vaughn's idea. To have a different type of wedding. But that's just me. Anyway. So you know. Trina. Not Trina. It's Trina. Said that she did not want her sisters. As bridesmaids. She did not want her sisters in the wedding. However. Tony came up with the idea. We should all carry her her veil, her, her her train down the aisle, you know, as sisters. I'm like, but y'all all dress like nobody matches. Y'all all dress weirdly, you know, different from each other. I'm like, no, I don't want y'all in my pictures. Mm -mm. Y'all could have at least wore the same color, different outfits, but the same color. Tamar is in pink. Tony's in the goddamn um uh suit jacket. Trina. Was a no Tracy is in a badass jumpsuit. I love that jumpsuit. And the Umba is in the goddamn gone cocktail dress up her ass crack. But I gon I'm digress. But as they was walking on the aisle, Tracy slipped, bumped into like a little plant thing, and I'm like, Lord. Because they was just trying to walk out. It was funny. Anyway, that was the whole episode. Again, I like the episode. Mommy pissed me off. She did. But it was good nonetheless. Anyway, I'm done. Peace.